Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures. I want to share with you something that the Lord shared with me this morning through reading the scriptures. And um, it's just one, another one of those wow moments, you know. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to Exodus chapter 23. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 9, okay? Now, this is after the Lord brought the children of uh, Israel out of Egypt. He gave them the Ten Commandments, okay? What they, the laws they were to follow going into the Promised Land, okay? Gave them the Ten Commandments after he called them out of Egypt. For our instruction in righteousness today, the Lord brings us out of Egypt, the world, from under the headship of Pharaoh, Satan, and he's going to guide us onto the Promised Land. Absent from the body, present with the Lord, okay? And you have to remember, brethren, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, right? So, Exodus chapter 23, we will be reading verses 1 unto verse 9 to start, okay? Thou shalt not raise a false report, Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Now this is echoed in Exodus chapter 20, verse 16, okay? But go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 17, one verse. Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17. Verse 4. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips. And a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Romans chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid! Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil that good may come. And what happens? Whose damnation is just. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay? And let's refresh our memories. Exodus chapter 23, verse 1. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 32. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But 
ye have not so learned Christ. If, conditional clause, if, so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, <coughs> and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Hold your place there. Romans chapter 12, of course. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Go back to Ephesians. Picking up at verse 24. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put away... Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. It's okay to be angry, but don't cause your mouth. Don't let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. In your anger, don't sin, okay? Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't go to bed angry, okay? Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Corrupt, putrid, rank, decaying. Okay? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, that it may minister grace, unmerited favor, unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, capital S, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Go back to Exodus chapter 23, verse 1. Okay? Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Our instruction in righteousness, okay? The Lord brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, gave them the Ten Commandments, what they are to follow, okay? All right? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, saves us, calls us out, okay? Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Okay? Okay? So, right here in verse 20, uh, ver uh, chapter 23, verse 1, you see, thou shalt not raise a false report. A false report. Lie. Okay? God brings you out of Egypt. The world saves you, you know? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay? Changed life. Hello? Okay? Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous judgment. Withdraw thyself from the wickedness of this world. Verse 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to decline. Break down, fall apart, 
okay, falling down, to decline after many, the multitude, to rest judgment. Don't be as the world. Look at what we already read in Romans chapter 1. Or in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 2. Don't be as the world. You're saved, born again, converted. Okay? Your life will change. The Lord is going to change your life. But you have to remember, brethren, God's not pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do something. Because you'd be a robot, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? And if he forced you, remember, that would not be a genuine love because it were coerced, even though the Lord could do that. But he wants your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole body, your whole soul, remember, okay? He wants everything that is of you by your choice, okay? You get me so far? But on this, check this out. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Okay? Check this out. Check this out. Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 21. Okay? Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 21. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he, Peter, did eat with the Gentiles. And you have to remember, as pertaining to our salvation, our standing in Christ, okay? There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither male or female, uh, bond or free, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, Jews, Gentiles, male, female, bond, free. Okay, as far as our standing in Christ, culturally, that's a different thing. A lot of people like to blend those two things together. Okay, salvifically, that's not in the scriptures, but as pertaining to our eternity, our salvation. Okay, there's neither Jew nor Greek. Okay. There is no distinction within salvation today in this dispensation. Culturally, whoop, yes, there, there is distinction, okay? But as far as salvation, no, 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 okay? Okay? God, I've covered that before. But see here, verse 12, For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Now remember, you're Pope Peter, okay? <laughs> Don't get me started on that. Remember, the Lord told Peter that uh, before the cock crow, thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me, okay? Okay? And because of all the multitude, what did Peter do when he was confronted? He denied the Lord three times, okay? And then when you look in Luke, one of the more painful things that anyone, I, could, I believe, could go through. The Lord tells you, heads up, straight up. Um, yeah, you, you say many great things about me. Yeah, if all shall depart from you, yet I won't. But yet, under circumstance. What did Peter do? He denied him three times. And the Lord, it says in the book of Luke, that the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. <clears throat> the look of the Lord upon Peter must have been so devastating. The, he looked upon him. I told you you were going to do this, Peter. Okay? Okay? So... Peter was converted by this time, yes. But he still had a little of that leaven, nagging with being separate from those whom the Lord had cleansed. 
Call not thou call not those that I have cleansed common. Just paraphrase that out of the book of Acts, okay? We have to remember that about Peter, okay? Because when uh, James sent these guys, he's like, oh, you know, fearing, what does it say? Fearing them which were of the circumcision, okay? Some people like to call say, well, this wasn't a doctrinal thing. Yes, it was. Yes, it was, okay? Today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, as pertaining unto our salvation, you and I are not required, of course, if you're a Gentile, you are not required, you are not required to keep the law in order to be saved, stay saved, to be right with God, okay? You are not required. Okay, him doing that was speaking against the truth of the gospel. Hence, it was a doctrinal thing, which Peter, which Paul, as we will see, verse 13. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, because remember, Peter was a pillar of the church, not the first pope. He was a pillar of the church, an elder, okay? An elder, okay? You got to remember that. And because he did that, many, because they saw Peter doing that, it's like, oh, you know? You see? You see? This is a doctrinal thing, okay? Not a preference thing, okay? Now let's continue. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. Even so as much, even so much, in so much, excuse me, that Barnabas, the son of consolation, also was carried away with their dissimulation. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Peter was in sin here. Peter was in sin here. This was a doctrinal error on the part of Peter. Okay? Okay? For reasons just explained. Now let's continue. Here's Paul. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. And, and, and while well, we're in the book of Galatians. Okay? <clears throat> while we are in the book of Galatians. Hold on, hold on. Uh, where is that? Where is that? Ah, chapter 3, verse 26 on to verse 29. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now let's go back to this. <clears throat> Verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the, the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Okay? Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. See, Peter was kind of reverting back onto the law with that, you know, making a separation line. When we just saw in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus, okay, in Christ Jesus. You are saved, born again, converted, 
you are in Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit, is within you. Okay? Okay? We, we get that, right? Okay? This is not referring to culture. Okay? Okay? This is not referring to physical ethnicity, distinction of kindred, stuff like that. This is as pertaining in Christ, see? Okay? <clears throat> and right here, verse 28 in Galatians chapter 3, that is what Peter was doing against by separating himself as he did in verse 12. Hence, a doctrinal issue. Do you get it? Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Knowing that of verse 16, <clears throat> we already read. Verse 17. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Right here. Right here. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. A transgressor, which Peter had just done. Okay? For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Remember what we read in Ephesians? Sealed with the Holy Ghost unto the day of redemption. And the Lord is that spirit, okay, people? The, you know, the Trinity thing, just forget about that, okay? Okay? I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? Now, go back to Exodus chapter 23, verse 2 again. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline many to rest after judgment, as we just saw the example in Galatians chapter 2. Okay? <clears throat> verse 3. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Countenance is the outer appearance, okay? Remember how the Lord said unto Cain, why is thy countenance fallen or sullen or something like that? Just paraphrase that, okay? Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Go to James. Go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. This ties in with Galatians, what we just looked at. Okay? James chapter 2. You have to remember that the book of James is specifically written for the Jews onto the, uh, in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? This is a time of Jacob's trouble epistle. You can prove that to yourself by reading the very first verse in the book of James. Okay? But... Let's learn a little something here. James chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 13. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. <laughs> what is a person? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, happy, okay? And say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou here, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? 
the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, spirits and body, you, ye, excuse me, ye commit sin. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. <clears throat> For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath shewed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against Judgment. Okay? Okay? And remembering what we just read also in Galatians, and it says here in Exodus chapter 23, uh, verse 3, Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Okay? Look upon him because he is poor. Have a respect to persons, as we saw Peter did in Galatians chapter 2. Okay? Do you get it? Let's continue. Right here. <laughs> right here. Uh, verses 4 and 5. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden and wouldest forbear to help him, Look at this. Thou shalt surely help with him. Isn't that interesting? Go back to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter, not Corinthians, I beg your pardon. Romans chapter 12, okay, verses 17 on to verse 21. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Oh, how many of you want to get even when your toes are stomped on, huh? How many of you want to lash out hmm? when you are offended? Especially if you are offended by the scriptures, right? <laughs> If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old thing, all things are become new. Behold, all th uh, old things are passing away. Excuse me. All things are become new. See, we we constantly struggle with that old man because sin has been condemned in the flesh. And it says here, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Your enemy, like, like we just saw here, here, hold your place here, hold your place here in Romans, where it says uh, in Exodus chapter 23, verses 4 and 5, If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden, and was forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Okay? Now, that does not mean, brethren, that you as a church of the living God, when you encounter someone who hates the Lord, spits on the Lord and on you too, that you are to give all this stuff on to him and bend over. No, 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 no. But 
Let's keep reading. Verse 20 in Romans chapter 12. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Right here, verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. An example. Your most bitterest enemy who hates you, who would run you over and beat you to death, right? You come across them, let's say he's dangling off of a cliff. And if you lose his grip, he plummet and fall to his death. And you come across him. Now see, that old man in you would be like, I'm just going to let you fall. I'm just going to let you fall and die. Aren't we supposed to be different? Well, Brad, how do you know if that's not the judgment of the Lord for him to do that? And you know what? On to that, I say amen. I say amen. But it says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Would you help an enemy who were dangling from a cliff and his life were in peril? Would you help them up? That can definitely come back to haunt you. Hi. <laughs> but what do you do in a situation like that? See, and the enemy, if the shoe were on the other foot and things were reversed, you know what they'd do. Boom. They'd stomp on your fingers. Wouldn't they? <laughs> Wouldn't they? Hmm? What would you do? What would you do? Think about that. Think about that. Okay? <clears throat> now, verse 6. Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Now, this also ties in with what we already looked at um, in verse 2. But I want to show this to you. Okay? Go to Leviticus. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. Remember, this is for our instruction in righteousness, which we need a lot of right now. Because I'll tell you something, brethren. You go out there uh, and, and be amongst the lost uh, in the, this world right now. Oh, brethren, up here, the people are... Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. These people are programmed nowadays, okay? And I'm telling you, brethren, it can really get on your nerves. <laughs> as, as the church of the living God, seeing a grown man, a mighty, manly man, oh, stand back, you're too close. <laughs> Big tough guy, right? <laughs> yeah, big tough guy. Stand back. You're too close. Oh, look at this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tough guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Afraid of something that isn't even all that deadly. Yeah. Yeah. Leviticus 18. Leviticus chapter eight, uh, 19, excuse me, verses 1 on to verse 18. Check this out. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Separate than, other than, be not conformed to this world. Okay? Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Children, you listen to what daddy and mommy tell you. Don't be disobedient unto your parents, children. Okay? That goes throughout any dispensation. All right? 
Turn ye not on to idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. Uh, blows Catholicism right out of the water right there. Okay? And remember, turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. See, in context, you know, little statutes and whatnot, but also for our instruction in righteousness, molten gods, idols, stuff you see on your television, sports heroes. And Lord have mercy on any of you if you... Um, look highly upon a politician, okay? Anything that takes the place over the Lord Jesus Christ, Church of the Living God, in your life, you've made that an idol. Is it your covetousness? Hmm? Verse 5. And if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, ye shall offer it at your own will. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Be instant in prayer. Okay? How many times a day do you praise the Lord for having mercy on a sinner who is chief? Hi. Way too many of us take for granted the praises of our Lord. And when you think about just how much the Lord has done for us as his body, the church of the living God. It says here, And if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, ye shall offer it at your own will. Remember, the Lord doesn't want a robot. How many times a day do you praise the Lord? Verse 6. It shall be eaten the same day ye offer it, and on the morrow, and if aught remain unto the third day, it shall be burnt in the fire. Okay? Okay? And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable. It shall not be accepted. You know, we are told to be instant in prayer, to be instant in season, out of season. There's nothing wrong. Actually, it is preferable that random moments of praise unto the Lord for as our Lord Jesus Christ just came out, I thank thee, O Lord. Okay? And why was he thanking him? Why was he giving praise? Because he had hid these things from the wise and prudent and had revealed them unto babes. You go find that on your own time, okay? <clears throat> Therefore, everyone, verse 8, Therefore, everyone that eateth it shall bear his iniquity, because he hath profaned the hollow thing of the Lord. And the soul that shall, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. Having mercy on the poor. You don't hoard everything. You know, there are those out there who don't have anything, who eat out of garbage cans. Okay? Right here, our Lord is telling us uh, for our instruction and in righteousness for today as well. Okay? What he was telling the Jews, leave something for those who don't have. Don't be so selfish, but have room within yourself to give unto others when you are able. Okay? Providing for the poor. 
and not leaving it in a garbage can for people to leave out of that. Oh, oh. Let's continue. Verse 11, you shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. And of course, our Lord says, uh, swear not at all. Okay. Vows are very serious unto the Lord. That's why it's better that you shouldn't vow. Okay. What are you going to do when you uh, make a vow and you break that vow? What are you going to do? Say, oh, sorry, Lord. It was an, uh, an error. Yeah, and he'll destroy the work of your hands. Yes. Bring your little world crumbling down around you. That's in Ecclesiastes. You go find that, okay? Let's continue. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. James chapter 4. Read that, okay? Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear thy God. I am the Lord. Don't take advantage of those who cannot see or hear. Talking literally, but for our instruction in righteousness, woe be unto you of the church of the living God, who know the truth and use the truth of the Lord to gain your advantage over those who see not or hear not. And if you are of the church of the living God and pull some kind of stunt like that, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Verse 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. What, what, what did we read in James? Okay. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. In righteousness. Okay, let's look at that again. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. The scriptures. The scriptures are what we are to judge upon. Ourselves first, and also what is out there. Okay? The scriptures got your number, boy. Has mine, has yours. And this will judge you accordingly. The scriptures judge you righteously because the King James scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, are God's words. How do you judge righteously? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Not your feelings. Not the status quo of the people. Not because this guy's doing it, that guy's doing it. No. This is our standard. This is what we judge upon. Starting with ourselves. And also the world outside our door. Okay? Comprende? Let's continue. Verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. A talebearer. Big mouth, blabbermouth, liar. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother, thy brother. In thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. There are those 
my brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, who are truly saved, born again converted, where I do not see eye to eye with you. <laughs> and I'm not speaking to a specific person, okay? I'm not, so you chill. But there are those out there who are my brothers, who are my sisters. I don't agree with at all. Likewise, you, my brother, my sister of the Church of the Living God, you might not agree with me at all yourself, all right? That's fine, okay? If you and I save born again, we are brothers because we have one Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Okay? We are to be like-minded and have one mind. Yes, we are. But there are times out there and people, spirit's own body, where you just, you don't agree. <laughs> it happens. Look at Barnabas and Paul, okay? Those kind of things happen, okay? I have, uh, with several brethren, not whom I'm in close, you know, things like that, but those who I know of who are brethren, who I just have <laughs> total disagreements with. But they're my brother or my sister. I'm your brother. If you are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, you know, just because you say you're a Christian, and you, I'm sure you are, fine Christian, but um, just because you say you are one thing doesn't mean you actually are, right? So where it says here, thou shalt not hate thy brother, in thine heart, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Verse 18, thou shalt not avenge. We, we, we saw that in Romans, applicable for us today in this dispensation, crossing dispensational lines, okay? Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And what does it say there? Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. You're in a bad spot if you have a grudge against your brother of the church of the living God. There are those out there of you who call yourself a Christian. And yeah, yeah, you sure are a Christian. But you're not of the church of the living God. Hence, you're not brothers. But see, with your brother, or your sister, whatever. You have problems with them, which happens, like Paul and Barnabas. Go your ways. Don't hold a grudge. I've covered that before. Grudges can kill you. <laughs> Sometimes actually, literally. Okay? Okay, now go back to Exodus chapter, uh, what, uh, chapter 23, okay? Verse 6 again, Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. You can also read uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 31, verses 1 on to verse 9. Let's continue. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay not, for I will not justify the wicked. Go to Job. Go to Job chapter 31. Job chapter 31. Job chapter 31, verses 13, under verse 23. Job 31, verses 13, under verse 23. 
If I did despise the cause of my manservant or of my maidservant when they contended with me, what shall I do? Get a load of this. Get a load of this. Okay? Let's, let's reread this again, these two verses. Read with me. Come on. Okay? Job 13 and verse 14. If I did despise the cause of my manservant or of my maidservant when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God riseth up? And when he visiteth, what shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? If I have withheld the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel myself alone, and the fatherless hath not eaten thereof. For from my youth he was brought up with me, as with a father, and I have guided her from my mother's womb. If I have seen any perish for want of clothing, or any poor without covering. I have a lot of experience witnessing on homeless people. And I've run into people who, who are Christians. It's like, I'm not giving that guy money because he's just going to go spend it on booze. I'm not going to go to a resale shop and get that guy a jacket or something because no one, no one the homeless, right, might hock it so he can get booze. Know what you do. Go with them. Go with them. Go with them and buy them food. Sit with them and talk with them. Okay? Don't, yeah. Unfortunately, the many kind of speak for the few when it comes to the homeless. Okay? But those out there who are poor, who are truly hungry, and you see them, and you turn your eyes away from them with that thing, like, ah, I'm not going to do that. And there is some legitimacy to your claim on that, yes. But how do you know? Unless you get out of the boat and try it. How many people have you walked away from who could have truly used your help. Hmm? And in all fairness, how many times have I? You think about that. Let's continue. Verse 20. If his loins have not blessed me, and if he were not worn with the fee, a fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless, when I saw my help in the gate, then let mine arm fall from my shoulder blade, and mine arm be broken from the bone. For destruction from God was a, was a terror to me, and by reason of his highness I could not endure. you fear the Lord, truly fear the Lord, that's going to really influence a lot of the things that you do, if you truly fear him. Do you truly fear the Lord? Hmm. Here, I'm, I'm looking at myself. Do you truly fear the Lord? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Okay. Now go back to Exodus. Verse 8. Ooh, verse 8. And thou shalt take no gift. For the gift blindeth the wise. And perverteth the words of the righteous. And thou shalt take no gift. 
For the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of the righteous, bribing people. Psalm 26. Psalm 26. Verses 9 unto verse 11. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. You are the company you keep. Proverbs chapter 15. I love the word. I love this. I love the scriptures. I love our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. <laughs> Proverbs 15, verses 24, under verse 33. The way of life is above to the wise. Who are wise? People who have head knowledge of things? Or the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Oh boy. Okay. Verse 24 again. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. But he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. Your damnation is just. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. But he that hateth gifts shall live. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding to, part, to depart from evil. See. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before hum honor is humility. People offering money to lie to sway this way you know think about the american politicians people bribing them kickbacks or something so these government types will sway their way okay now uh, proverbs 17 verses 23 and 24 proverbs 17 verses 23 and 24 a wicked man taketh a gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. What does that mean? The eyes of a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And the fool sees what? But the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth, sees only the earth, the things of this world, the flesh, fleshly, sensual, devilish things. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, the fear of the Lord, and to depart from evil is understanding. See? Okay? Okay? Now, check this out. Go to Amos. 
Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. <laughs> Verses 10 under verse 15. <clears throat> They, the lost, and in context talking about, this is written clearly onto the Jewish people, book of Amos, our instruction in righteousness. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. And any single one of you of the church of the living God, you know that when you make stands for the scriptures, when you seek to adhere your life onto the scriptures, to live the scriptures by faith and practice. When you're out there warning people, telling people to come to repentance, to repent of themselves, you need to repent of your self-righteousness and of your pride and your love of the worldly things that you have. Okay? You speak the truth out there as according to the scriptures and speak of the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. For as much therefore as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat. Ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. Don't for one second think you're going to pull something over on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He knows what you're doing. They afflict the just. They take a bribe. And they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time. For it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you, as ye have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good. Establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. And remember, in this dispensation, Paul admonishes us, through the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that spirit. We are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Abhor means what? Extreme hatred. We are to abhor that which is evil, dear brethren. Crossing dispensational lines. And what is evil? According how you judge? No. According to the scriptures. Okay. Now, go back to Exodus chapter 23, verse 9. Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger... For ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Have to go here. Have to go to Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2. Some of us have to be remember this. To not be high-minded. Some of us need to remember where we came from, from whence we came. Not dwelling on the sins of the past. 
because the Lord has forgiven us our past sins. Okay? The blood of Christ that he shed on the cross cleanseth us from all sin. Past, present, and future. That, that, that don't mean that we, ask, that we are not to ask for forgiveness. No. No. Because today is the 28th. Okay? He who confesseth and forsaketh his sins shall have mercy. Did you read the 28th proverb today? My wife and I, because it's the 28th, and this one, this one, that's the end of this month, we read uh, from 28 on to 31. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay? But, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Very familiar. Something to remember. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Lost people are dead in trespasses and sins. You know, walking zombies. As I was talking with the sister yesterday about this, you know, you heard about these um, zombie apocalypse, and they like to tie it into undead zombies. Um, uh, what was that? The Walking Dead zombie television show, whatever the heck that is, right? Predictive programming. Them people are zombies out there, brother, sister, okay? Who fall for all this propaganda and nonsense, whose brains have just went out of their head because they have no fear of God, the way of peace they have not known. See, all that zombie stuff was predictive programming. Think about it. Are not the people out there zombies today? Mindless? Not all. No, no, no. Not all. But a majority of the people you meet, you know, <laughs> grown men, grown mighty men, step back. You're too. <laughs> or you need to wear a mask. Oh, yeah. You need to get saved. <laughs> but see, that's what they're like out there right now. Okay. Sorry for that little rabbit trail. Okay. But. <laughs> And you hath he quickened who were, past tense, dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, lowercase s, that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That's what we were. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay? We are not to live in the past, but it is a healthy thing to remember from whence we came. I, some of you need to apply that to yourselves every once in a while. Remembering from whence he came. Not dwelling on it. Okay? Because go to Jude. Go to Jude. Remember, Jude does not have chapters. Okay? Pet peeve. Beg your pardon. Jude. Verses 17 on to verse 23. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit, sensual, Led by their senses, their feelings. I feel, I feel this, I feel. He who trusteth in his own heart is a what? A fool. You can't trust your feelings. Okay? 
You balance your feelings, or excuse me, compare the feelings that you're having upon the scriptures. Because, well, I feel I'm saved. I feel you're lost. Which one's right? The scriptures. Well, I just believe. Yeah. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure you do. But yet there is no change in you. See, Exodus chapter 23, what we're looking at right now and we're comparing right now is a changed life. A changed life. The Lord will change your life. Don't do that. Don't touch that. Don't eat that. Don't look at that. What are you doing? Stop that. Get away from that. Okay? Okay? It's like, do this, do this, because he dwells within you. He's not leading you at gunpoint. Okay? Jude's, uh, we're in Jude, uh, reading verse 17, again. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost dwells within you, and the Lord is that Spirit, Jesus Christ God our Father. Yeah, I'm going to say that all the time. So, you know, get used to it. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some, have compassion, making a difference. Not to be as a diotrephes or diatrophes who loveth to have the preeminence. Condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Remember the hole that the Lord pulled you out of. Remember that world that the Lord brought you out of under the hair, uh, under the um, headship of Satan, Pharaoh. And if you claim you do, then why is there absolutely no difference between you and someone who is lost other than your rhetoric resembles something that is Christian? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, behold. All things have become new. And of some having, having compassion, making a difference. Compassion, remembering from whence you came and having compassion on those who are going to hell, who are not saved. And it says making a difference. And here's the other thing. And others save with Fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. In other words, scare the hell out of them. Scare the hell out of them. Has, has the Lord ever used you in personal one-on-one -on -one interaction with a, with a person, spirit, soul, and body, where all he was doing was um, guiding you on, through the scriptures, tearing the hide off of that individual who he's using you for to uh, speak to, you know? It's an impressive sight, especially when they get angry. 
<laughs> but now go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 20 under verse 23. Uh, let's, let's, let's refresh our memories in verse 9 in Exodus chapter 23. And thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Romans 6, verses 20 on to verse 23. For, ye, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Having uh, uh, on some, having compassion on some, making a difference. Remembering the heart of a stranger because you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You and I were once part of that world. And you and I remember what it was like as someone who was lost. And there are those who are definitely lost, who want nothing to do with the truth. But there are still to this day, even though a lot of them are zombies out there, there are still those out there today who want the truth. And let's pray, brethren, Sisters, Church of the Living God, that the Lord will guide our paths onto those who truly, truly want him and want to be brought out of Egypt. May you have the courage to follow him whithersoever he goes and not just sit there. You see, we are to judge righteous judgment according to the scriptures. And our lives change once we are truly saved and born again and converted. And we see in Exodus chapter 23 change after the Lord wrought for them. The Lord hath wrought for you. What are you doing still dabbling with that old man? Now in Exodus chapter 23, I want us to read verses 20 on to verse 25. Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 on to verse 25. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Our instruction in righteousness, literally, taking the Jews on to the promised land, different dispensation, faith and works, eternal security was not there during this dispensation for our instruction in righteousness. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way to bring thee into the place which I have prepared, the Holy Ghost, our instruction in righteousness. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwells within us who are truly saved and born again and converted. Okay? Beware of him, fear the Lord, and obey his voice. Change life. Go here, do that, do this. Okay? Provoke him not, and grieve not the Holy Ghost. 
whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. For he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Okay? Now, we have the Lord living within us. And today, there ain't any sin that cannot be forgiven. Okay? Blasphemy uh, against the Holy Ghost is not applicable for us today in this dispensation. Okay? It was when he was offering the kingdom of heaven, when he first appeared, and it will be there in the kingdom of heaven when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is physically on the earth. Okay? Okay? We have to remember that. We have to remember that. But the instruction in righteousness, for where it says there, for my name is in him, okay? You're saved and born again, converted to the church of the living God, sealed with the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And you're going to allow your feet to go places where you shouldn't. Let your hands touch things that they shouldn't. Let your eyes see things that they shouldn't. Let your ears hear things that you shouldn't. The Holy Ghost within you. Don't make me listen to that. Don't make me see that. Chastening comes upon. If you ain't being chastened, you got bigger things to worry about. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, remember during this dispensation, faith and works, okay? But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And, I sh and ye shall be unto me sons and daughters. I just paraphrase that part of it. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Jeremiah chapter 10. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 3. Hear ye the word which, I, which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Make yourself your own little God. Make yourself your own little God. You shall be as gods, no good and evil. You will be like the Most High, right? Right here. Verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Now, these wicked, care Catholic, Pentecatholic, prosperity twits like would look at something like that it's like see you do this and you're not never going to get sick it's not god's will for you to be sick 
Yeah, yeah. Go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter 1. Sickness. Sickness. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 on verse 6. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. My people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Back to Egypt. Back to the world. Learning the ways of the heathen. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head, the whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of thy foot, even unto the head, there is no sounding, soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. The whole head is sick. The whole head is sick. Go to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. I think you know what verse we're going to look at. Then we're going to be done. Mark chapter 2. Verses 15 on to verse 17. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. And there were many, and there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh? with publicans and sinners. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician. Self-righteous. Self-righteous. But they that are sick, knowing that you're in sin and that you're going to go to hell that you have trespassed against the Lord I came not to call the righteous they that are whole the righteous but sinners the sick to repentance and the Pharisees you know the self-righteous They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And that repentance is not belief. It is a turning from your self-righteousness. And how do you do that? Being broken. Contrite, godly sorrow. And the Lord will break you down so badly.
that the only option that you could possibly have is to trust on him for what he did for you on the cross. And I can guarantee you, when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite, you can't wait to call on the name of the Lord. And again, those who protest that are not saved. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Um, this was just a very quick video. Um, this was, like I said, this was something that the Lord um, shared with me and just it was like, oh, here, go here. So, wow. <laughs> so I wanted to share this with you. Um, thank you, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Um, we love you. And just thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. And very quickly, I want to I wanna make a comment. Um, I see and get notified of all the comments on the videos. Um, because of things that have happened um, before, I, um, I tend not to be in the comments. I mean, I see your comments. I get the comments. I get notified of the comments, yes. Um, and I, I see your comments. Uh, I do. But um, I uh, just, I please, I'm not ignoring you or anything like that. I get your comments, uh, as I do get the emails, too. <laughs> but um, I've learned lessons about that, valuable lessons. So that's why I am very reluctant to be interactive in comments, especially on the channel here. Um, I will comment on videos uh, and witnessing onto people, uh, that kind of thing. But uh, So do not be offended and think that I'm ignoring your comments or something like that. I get all your comments. Okay? So, just so you know. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, we love you. And we will see you in the next video. Okay? Bye-bye.